Hello guys, welcome to Solo Club. It's Friday. I've got a glass of water because this is what you do when you're 43 and it's Friday. And uh, it's been an incredibly long week. And uh, it's, well, it just nothing lets up in this game. Things are always just utterly crazy for good reasons. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of those days today where I've had more stuff to do than, I, than I've had time to do it, if that makes sense. That does unfortunately mean that I will need to finish. We've got a hard stop, as they say in the corporate world. A hard stop at UK time, 4.45. So it'll be a 45-minute live stream rather than, rather than the usual hour. Apologies, I need to basically get home and then very quickly have some, something to eat and then join a live stream for some another, another live stream that I'm not hosting, thankfully, uh, for something else, a big launch uh, of a... It's media tech, basically. Um, I'm, 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 I'm going to go. I'm doing like a remote kind of thing where I'm watching their live stream. So you don't need to know that, though. But that, that is why we'll be, we'll be finishing a little bit earlier. Um, I hope you're well. And uh, if you're joining me live now, hello. I will be looking at the comments in a little while, just so we can take some questions and answers. And um, if you're watching this in the future, again, hello. Um, very quickly, some news on the Academy. I have some notes here that the Academy team have told me to, to mention. Um, we're at that point now where things happen without me knowing. I say, yes, please do that. And they happen. And then I'm told to tell everyone about it. So all good news. Uh, basically, the Academy, the um, Solo Club Creator Academy, which is kicking off in January next year, is all very much in the planning stages, and it's all very exciting. Um, we've got a bustling Discord community, which is completely free to join. So if you want, even if you're not bothered about the Academy, but you just want to get in into a room, a virtual room um, full of people who, like yourself, might want to become, you know, be, become cre content creators, or you might be a content creator already, and you feel like you need some help or you're just getting a bit stuck, get involved in the free Discord server. It's down below. Loads of people have joined recently, so thank you if you've done that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is um, we've had a few requests about the Academy, uh, the pricing. Um, we're getting near Christmas. Things are getting tight. Everything is more expensive than it ever used to be. Um, and quite understandably, people are asking if you can pay in installments for the membership for the Academy. Um, you can now. So the guys behind the scenes, uh, including Callum, who is sometimes on these live streams in, in the comments section, uh, in, in the chat window. Uh, hello, Callum, if you're watching, by the way. Um, he has sorted all this out, all, all of this out for us, basically. And you can now um, pay in, 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 in four installments, basically. So rather than pay paying the amount up front, you can spread it out across four. So that's uh, hopefully going to be handy for a lot of people. Um, and also, I don't think we've made, we've made enough, enough of a big deal about this, but there is a complete no questions asked refund policy. Now, I know this is, a, is an academy membership. It's, there's, n there's nothing tangible. You know, I can't take things off you if you, if you decide to have a refund. Um, but it's just a goodwill thing, really. So if you find that it's not good enough, it's not interesting enough, it doesn't meet your expectations, you can have a full refund, no questions asked, no hard feelings. It's just something we've, we've built into it. I don't think you'll want a refund. I should point that out. I think it's it's utterly worth the money. But if you're if you're unsure and you think this is a bit of a risk, then you can go into this knowing that you can get a full refund if you're not satisfied. Um, they were the two main things I needed to mention. Uh, what else? Very quickly, kit.co. I've put together a list of the kit that I use in this studio. So my favorite vlogging kit and some other bits and pieces. So if, if you're at a point in your creator journey where you need to get a new camera or you need to get a, a, you know, an entire kind of vlogging setup uh, going, but you don't know where to start, there is a link which I think will hopefully be down below at some stage in the, in the, in the um, description that is my kit.co page, which is where I've listed the stuff that I use or the, the, the stuff that I recommend uh, from my experience. So um, I think that's all of the housekeeping stuff, I hope. I'll get told off if I don't say those things. So that's why I've mentioned it. So uh, if you're just joining guys, hello. Uh, you may have just missed the fact that we are going to be finishing uh, in 45 minutes time because I have to rush home to go and attend a virtual event. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not there. It's in California and I'm doing it from my kitchen table, but um, I do have to head off at, four, at quarter to five. So slightly cur curtailed uh, live stream. And for that reason, I won't waffle on anymore. I'll get straight into, into today's topic, um, which is all about how to deal with criticism on, on YouTube. So very quickly, last weekend, I published a 
video on the Mark Ellis Reviews uh, channel where I compared a Intel iMac against an M1 iMac and an M3 iMac. And to cut a long story short, the Intel iMac beat the other two in a very specific task. And I thought that was quite interesting. I published the video. The video went off the charts. But very quickly, I started to get people saying, hang on a minute, this isn't a fair test. You know, your, your, your Intel iMac has 32 gig of RAM and your M1 and M3 iMacs have 8 gigabytes of unified memory. That ain't fair, Mark. What are you doing? That's stupid. Um, lots of people said this. Some people said it very nicely and you know, offered very constructive criticism. Some people didn't. And uh, the interesting thing was is that these these pieces of feedback about this memory issue, this memory um, oversight on my behalf, kept coming in. And they're still coming in to this day. I think today, today I've had two or three new fresh comments reminding me that it wasn't a good idea to do that comparison. And this got me thinking that actually this, well, firstly, it's it's a learning for me, but equally it's something to talk about on Solo Club because it really neatly sums up how YouTube works. And if, you, if you're really serious about YouTube and you want to get into it and you know, follow my, follow in my footsteps and build a channel where you've you, know, you potentially you can go full time with it you will encounter this trust me and you'll encounter it again and again and again it won't ever be something that you fix and move on from but that's actually quite a good thing and that's what i'm going to talk about today so i think there are six things i've got some notes here which is why i keep referring to this um there's six things i think you need to do to counter this kind of criticism if you if and when more more um accurately you encounter it now, the first thing to mention with this, actually, um, is to, to, to kind of paint a picture about how this works behind the scenes. If you look at that video on face value, so if you watch the video and then you look at the comments, you think, you'd think you probably think, oh, he's messed up here, isn't he? He's, it, this isn't good. Because the, the vast majority of the comments are people telling me that it was a, an unfair test and that I should retest and do this, that and the other. Um, <clears throat> And you look at that and, and understandably think he's he's screwed up here. He needs to take this video down or at least do a, a follow up and a kind of right, right the wrong that he's made here. No, <laughs> um, because the the analytics for this video tell a completely different story. So I've got them here. So um, at the time of filming this, this was earlier today. It's gone up a little bit since then again. But fr from this morning, um, it, it, it had pulled in 54,000 views. 489 comments, 6,300 hours of watch time. And these are the, the next ones are the, are the important numbers. 259 new subscribers. Nearly 260 people clicked that subscribe button when they watched that video. Um, and a like to dislike ratio of this, this surprised me, 96.3%, which is very high. It's, it's roughly the channel average for me, but it's, it's a very nice number. 96.3% you know, of people liked it, which, again, you wouldn't think that looking at the comments. Um, and it's also generated £216 in AdSense revenue, which is nice. And um, the other great number, actually, is the fact that it, it has beat the channel's average view dur duration by 1 minute and 42 seconds. So people are watching this video for longer. Most people are liking it. And it appears to be, you know, it's bringing in new new people, new subscribers to the channel. So you look at those stats and you think, well, actually, that's one of the most successful videos I've made and published this year. And it's been def it's definitely one of the most highly engaged videos. I, I had, a, had a feeling it would be just because of what happened with the test. I, I didn't quite foresee what the what most of the engagement and comments would be about. But um, yeah, I, I, these numbers are surprising when, like I say, you start to look into them and compare them against the public facing image of that video. So with all that in mind, like I said, I, th I think there's six things um, that you need to do if this happens to you. And I've done all of these six things with this particular video. So the first thing is take on board what people are saying. It's it's very easy to get uh, defensive and feel very protective over the, over the, over that thing that you've kind of sweated over and spent an awful lot of time in it and invested all that effort into. Um, when someone says it's not good enough or it's not right or you've done this wrong, let's not. We're, we're human. That really give it, it hurts. It's not nice. Um, and particularly if it keeps happening. So it's not just Dave. It's Sarah and then Jane and then Paul. And they all, all of them are coming in and telling you that you do, you've done something wrong. That isn't great. But... 
there is very useful feedback in there. So for me, in this instance, I've learned that RAM has a significant impact on the export from Final Cut Pro. As you can tell, if you didn't know what this video was about, it's not life or death at all. Um, but that, that was the main learning. The, the, the thing that most people were telling me was that the fact that the Intel iMac had more memory gave it an unfair advantage, basically, because Final Cut Pro uses a lot of RAM when it does the export. I didn't know that. I had no idea. So I've learned that. So th these people who have pointed pointed this out to me have taught me something. And it is true. I've done, I've done a follow-up test, which I'll come on to in a moment. Um, and it is, yeah, it's, it's taught me something. So as hard as it was to take those... Um, those those pieces of feedback uh, delivered in varying ways um it was important to do so and i've learned i've moved on i've kind of I'll, I'll build that into future tests and i just i've learned something so take it on board as hard as that criti criticism is the next thing is to thank the people who offer it because most people who do this uh, most people who, who have got um who want to have their say are gen generally nice human beings that they'll do it in a way that is fair it's constructive criticism um it's not kind of vindictive or nasty they're, they're just telling you or that they're, they're giving you their side of the story they're explaining why they don't agree with something that you've done and they're nice about it they're lovely you, you could imagine having that conversation in person with them down the pub or in a coffee shop and it wouldn't get nasty it would just be a completely fair conversation where they're, they're kind of revealing why they have a different opinion to, to you or why they think you've done something slightly wrong. Um, those people deserve to be thanked because they've gone out of their way to firstly to watch your video and they've probably watched all of it. There's a good chance they've watched a, a very good chunk of it. So they've spent a lot of their time, their invaluable time watching your content. And equally, most of these people, and a lot of them will, will, will say this as well, they, they know or they have a good idea or a kind of a, an assumption that making this content is difficult. It's not easy. We don't just pull this stuff out of our backside. It is. It takes a lot of time, sweat, and blood, and, blood, sweat, and tears rather, to get it out of the door. And equally, it costs. You know, they're watching a free video, which has cost the creator to make, whether it be in monetary terms or in time terms. And time is your most expensive asset. So these people understand that. So it's important to thank them. If you get loads of these comments thanking every single one of them is, is quite a big task. So my, my suggestion with that, and what I do these days is thank a few of them and the rest, I just do the the, the, you know, the little heart like thing because that demonstrates that I've read, you know, it, it gives an indication, a signal that I've read and you know, I, I've, I've thanked them basically for their comment. The next one I always struggle with, and I think I've talked about it a bit on this. In fact, I definitely have talked about it on these uh, live streams is to avoid feeding the trolls. So some people won't offer that feedback in quite the right manner. They'll be nasty about it. They'll be vindictive. They'll be personal about it, possibly. Um, and they'll just treat you like a bit of an idiot. They'll, they'll treat you like you're, you, know, you were kind of born yesterday. Um, they can be very patronizing and just not very nice. And they'll question your credit. They'll question your credibility, credibility rather, um, and just poke poke at you. Now, I do everything in my power to ignore those people. And over the last couple of months, I have hidden more people from the channel than ever before. So people who leave nasty comments or comments that are just deeply irritating and um, potentially are kind of um, painting a very bad picture about my channel unfairly, um, I, I remove them from the, from the, from the um, channel. So I've been doing that a lot more but I still bite occasionally. There's, there's still instances where someone says something that I just think, no, I've got to say something and I go for it. So I've, I've done that on several, I think the, the comments are still there. You can, if you want to have a laugh, you can go and have a look at them. Um, I've done that on several occasions on this particular video and I regret every single one of those responses, not because I've been nasty or, or anything like that. It's, it's just because I've put time into responding to those people and it's wasted time. I haven't, I haven't gained anything from responding to those people. They've probably gained something because they've got a response. And, and most trolls want responses. They, they love that sort of stuff. They, they want to get you riled up. And, but I think, again, th this stems from the passion and the, the kind of love for your craft. And if someone pokes fun at it and is, is unfair in, with their feedback, it's natural, it's human to want to respond. Uh, what you should do, really, is just take a minute sit back, have a deep breath, have a glass of water, whatever you need to do, do something else, go for a walk, do whatever you need to do, go and play with your kid, 
fuss your dog and then do something else and forget about it, move on. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> this is one of those things, do as I say, not as I do. I, I'm, 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 I'm better at it, but this, again, this video did, I, I fell foul of that particular thing, that particular uh, tactic with this. Um, so yeah, avoid feeding the trolls. That's number three. Um, number four is if someone uh, mentions something in their criticism of, of your video that isn't true, that is categorically wrong. Now, if, 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 if you've done something in that video that you know 100% is correct, or it's, it may have been misconstrued potentially, but w w whatever that commenter, commentator, commenter, whatever, however you call these people, um, whatever they're saying is just incorrect. If that, if you feel that needs to be corrected, <laughs> um, go about it, do it, go do, do so, but go about it and be fair and, and nice and don't be horrible about it. Just say, look, I, thank you for your, for your comment. However, that isn't, that isn't correct. I did this because of this, whatever. Give them the facts that kind of prove that whatever you did was correct. I did that on a couple of, of occasions on this um, particular video. There were, there were two or three comments that, that were left that they wouldn't have damaged the brand to the point of, you know, be, of, of there being a problem. But if onlookers saw that comment, it may have caused a bit of an issue. So I, I just wanted to show that I'm present and, and taking that stuff into account and I'm watching and I'm, I'm responding and where I need to offering clarification about things. So that's important. Um, the number five is something you're watching now. So make more content about it. If, if you have one of these videos that goes off the charts and you get loads of views and loads of comments and a high like ratio and it just it just pops off massively. Whenever that's happened for me, I've tried to capitalize on that. It doesn't always work, but more often than not, it does because you've created you've started a, a narrative for something that needs continuing. So what I've done with this one, so I published the video at the, the video that I'm referring to on Sunday, I think it was last week. And then on Wednesday, sorry, Thursday, I published a newsletter that followed up on that video from Sunday. So I, I think on Monday or Tuesday, I said, look, I've taken your feedback on board. Um, thank you. And I'm going to act on it. I'm, I'm going to do another test, but I'm going to do it on my newsletter. So if you want to see that retest of these iMacs, sign up here to the free newsletter you'll get that later later in the week and let me know what you think that worked really well i've not looked at the numbers yet but i know it did bring in more subscribe basically I've, I've had more subscribers this week to the newsletter than normal so that has worked and that newsletter has been watched a lot of times so uh, i think well over 250 times now so um good stuff that that has worked so i've, I've immediately created another piece of content from that initial video and this is i'm, I'm making this video and actually, I wrote a Substack post about it this morning as well. So, Substack, so uh, newsletter, Substack post, live stream, and I've because I have two different YouTube channels, I've kind of crossed across two different. I've, I've, I've crisscrossed beyond two brands. So we've gone from Marcus reviews you know, with that topic to talking about it on Solo Club. So I'm, I'm I'm kind of carrying that narrative across my two brands, and hopefully getting more eyes on both channels from one video, from one video that has gone off the charts for me in terms of engagement and interest and criticism and all that sort of stuff. So milk it, basically. If this happens, don't feel bad about milking it because you've hit on something. That's really important. Um, and the last thing, is this, have I done five or six? I've got no idea. It's Friday. I think I think there are six. Um, <laughs> the next thing is to really keep in mind with this stuff that all engagement on YouTube is good engagement. YouTube doesn't care if it's a good, if it's a positive comment or a negative comment. It, pro it probably doesn't even know. It just knows that my video had 489 comments and people seem to be very interested in it. So the theory with this, we, we, ne we never know, but it's, it's, a, it's a, a fairly um, well-regarded theory among people who know much more about YouTube than me, uh, which is that the algorithm favors those videos. So if your video has lots and lots of comments, lots of kind of interaction between people in those comments, and if you, this, you as the creator are getting involved as well, it gives you a bit of a boost and quite a significant boost, I think. Um, again, I can't prove this, but just from intuition, I know that some, some of my best performing videos are videos that have got very big comments threads. You know, I've hit on some topic or I've done, I've done something that has really kind of prompted people to get involved in the comments um so all engagement is great and it, some of it may not be nice some of it may be hard to take in terms of feedback on what you're doing again go, going back to number one that's where you need to learn but 
remember that, that all of this stuff is great engagement. And I, I have no doubt that the fact that that video has, you know, 54,000 views and is climbing every single day is because it's so active in the comments. It's not, it, 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 that is probably having a bigger effect, a bigger effect than the first three seconds, you know, the, the hook that I have in there. Um, YouTube is probably giving it a good push based on the engagement. So all engagement is fantastic engagement on, on YouTube. And the other thing to, uh, to remember as well is that really horrible engagement. So people who leave horrible comments do get filed away. Or I've, I've never really seen it fail this at all. It's, it's a very good um, spam filter. Um, those comments that could hurt you and aren't very nice at all do get put in a bucket. And don't check that bucket. Don't do it. I, I had a bit of a laugh on Twitter the other day saying, if you want to kind of remind yourself that you're a decent human being and you're a, you're a YouTuber, go into your... Uh, held for review section in the comments um don't <laughs> there's some horrible people out there. honestly I, so, some of the stuff that's in mine is utterly unbelievable um you do question humanity so um don't go in there uh, but the nice thing is is that that is kept away youtube does a brilliant job with that so it's, it's a very important part of the, the mental health aspect of being a creator i think and clearly they know that so yeah, that was my my thing today, guys. Um, I hope that's interesting. Like I said, we, we have less time today for questions, but we've still got quite a bit of time. We've still got, what, 20, 20 minutes. So um, let's dive into the chat. As always, we've got the, <clears throat> the regulars on board. David, Tobias, Luke, James, Alan. Two Alans. David, Michael's Tech Talk. Um, welcome on board, guys. Yeah, hit me, hit me, with, with, uh, hit me with some questions, please, because um, I do think this topic of um, how to deal with criticism on YouTube is is really important. It's something that, again, that you're never taught. You're not taught any of this stuff, obviously, but I don't think there's enough about this um, out there, really. I, and whenever I watch a YouTube video that I enjoy or that is quite contentious or whatever it is, if it's a little bit spiky in terms of the kind of the content and the opinions in within it, I always have a quick look at the comments just to see how it's kind of gone down. And you do see a lot of these videos like mine where people have really gone for the creator and said, this is not good enough. It's not right, whatever. Um, and I, at the back of my mind, I'm, I'm always thinking, how is that creator dealing with this? Is it bothering them now? Are they having dinner with their family and thinking about it? Or, or you know, my, my last point, are they thinking, brilliant what an, what a, what an amazing thing for the channel you know it sent this this video off into the stratosphere it fascinates me it really does uh, persona 1600 my old work chum how you doing um right let's get some questions on here james do you make a conscious effort to make the business eco-friendly and paperless what a brilliant question completely off topic and what to what i was talking about which is what i like james thank you um is it paperless it, it I've I very rarely write things down on paper. The only paper that I seem to get weirdly, I say weirdly because I've requested not to get it, um, is from my bank. My bank still sends me statements and um, like electronic funds transfers and stuff, uh, as in the, the not notification of those funds, not checks and money in them. You know, you know what I mean? They send correspondence in the post, even though I've clearly several times gone into the online banking thing and said. I, I want paperless statements, please. So Santander, get your act together. Um, yeah, in terms of being eco-friendly, how conscious? I don't know how consciously I do this, James. To be completely honest, um, but the the studio is quite a good example. So um, I won't demonstrate it because I might turn this off. But I can I can ask my digital assistant over there to turn the studio off, and she does. Everything turns itself off. So very little stuff is left on because I think I, I wouldn't like. Uh, certainly for a fire hazard, but I wouldn't like the idea of leaving everything on in here um, while I'm not here. But yeah, going paperless, I, I don't have to deal with paper, really. Everything is PDFs. It's just the bank that needs to get their, their act together. Good question, though, James. I like that. Um, David, is, is this a question or just some... Just a th oh, it is a question. Um, I was in the Apple store in Bristol last week where I saw the new Mac Black M3 MacBook Pro. Uh, it was covered in fingerprints. I thought Apple was supposed to address this problem. Uh, today, I, I didn't do my little preamble about... Um, Tech questions aren't technically, technically, excuse the pun, um, for Solo Club, but I do take them occasionally. So and it does remind me, I need, I need to do more live streams on Marcos Reviews because these kind of questions are perfect for that. But I will answer your question, David, because you're always here. Um, 
so uh what are my thoughts on this it, it does still pick it, it absolutely still picks up fingerprints but it's nowhere near as bad as the midnight color for the macbook air which is just ridiculously terrible for t picking up fingerprints um they've addressed it i think they've addressed it in, in terms of making it less bad but it still picks up fingerprints it's that kind of color i, I mean there's not much they can do really if, if it's a very dark metallic color it's probably going to pick up f fingerprints um yeah one of those things Alan, you thought the video was really... So Alan's referring to the iMac video that I've been talking about today. Um, you thought the video was really fun. Thank you. That's nice to know. I did have some people... I had some lovely comments, actually, on that video, but they get they get drowned out very quickly by the 8,000th person, person saying, you shouldn't have done that comparison between 32 and 8. I get the point. I, 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 millions of people have told me. Um, uh, so you're hoping I did the same thing for the MacBook Pro. Can you imagine? Um, I have a 2018 Intel MacBook Pro if you want to borrow it to add in. A, that's very kind of you, Alan. Thank you. Um, I'll let you know if I need to take you up on that. Um, I will be doing some more comparis comparisons, rather, actually. And um, yeah, stay tuned on that one. Michael, uh, any advice for dealing with brands that reach out to work with you and then ghost you when you send them the info they ask for in regards to fees, etc.? Yeah, this happens quite a lot. I know that... Um, my uh, fellow YouTuber, my mate, uh, Alex Gear and Tech. If you've not checked out Alex Gear and Tech before, by the way, check him out. He's, he's got, I think, one of the most unique approaches to tech YouTube. I love his reviews. They're brilliant. Um, his edits as well are just uh, incredible. I, I don't know how he has the time to do them, but <laughs> he's, he's got a normal job as well. Um, but, um, but Alex does, um, he, he told me a little while ago that whenever this happens, he he waits a waits a day or two, and if they don't get back to him, he sends a just a, a, a reply. And the only thing in the reply is a ghost emoji to indicate that he's been ghosted. And he said he, he said he would not believe how many of them get back on that after you've sent that. It seems to it's a bit of a obviously tongue in cheek thing, but he said it seems to work with more brands than you think. I've never had the guts to do it for some reason, um, but I will at some stage. Um, but yeah, it, 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 there's not much you can do, Michael. You could try the ghost emoji. Do, do, do the Alex ghost emoji. Um, you can't do much more than just chase them, really. And there's only so many chases you can do before you're wasting your time. Uh, I, I'd give it two or three chases, and if they disappear, move on. There's plenty of other brands in the sea, as they say. Um, but if, if they ghost you, if they do disappear, I, I, I had this in my in my previous career. You know, if you're getting ghosted by people that you're sending quotes to for stuff it's for a reason. They're probably not going to become a customer and you're probably going to waste a lot of time trying to get them to become a customer. So it, it, being ghosted normally says something, I think. James, did you have a good time last Saturday on your on your boys' night out? Was I out, out last Saturday? Was that last Saturday, James? What was I doing last Saturday? Uh, I'm checking my diary now <laughs> because I can't remember what, remember what I did last Saturday. No, I wasn't out last Saturday, was I? I think you may have got that mixed up, James. The, uh, my girlfriend was was out on Saturday. She was out with a friend um, for the first time in a long time. We're new parents. Um, well, he's 18 months old now, but still new parents. Um, no, I, I did go to... What did I do last weekend? I went to Man United last weekend on... Was it Sunday? No, it was there. It was Saturday. Oh, I don't know. I've got no idea, guys. Um, I did go to Man United, though, on behalf of Snapdragon, so I had to pretend to be a Man United fan for the day. That was interesting. Um, uh, James, do sponsored VIG. I'm not sure what that means, James. Can you uh, give me some more meat on the bones? Uh, Callum. Hello, Callum. Callum is the uh, Academy master mastermind. He's the guy who has managed to get this month, month, uh, for four monthly payment plan thing in place so thank thank callum for that basically he's got it sorted we, we are listening we're, we're listening to what you guys are asking for and you can now pay for the for the academy in installments if you want to uh rob this is a, gr a great question was the sponsor of the of the video okay with the reaction to it so the sponsor for the imac video was trend micro i think which is the um i need to get this right was it the trend micro one i think it was the uh, cleaner one pro i think it was um was it that? I'm going to have to check now. Ah, oh, guys, I should know this. There's so much going on. This is what happens when you have so many videos going out. You forget who sponsored what. Um, but I can tell you very quickly. No, it wasn't. It was Robo. Was it Robo? Yeah. 
let me start again. So Roboform, the password manager, uh, the guys that sponsored that video. Um, I've not heard from them, actually. We, we always say, obviously, when, when a video is published uh, that is sponsored, it gets sent to the sponsor afterwards to say, look, it's live. Thank you. Let's hope for lots of views, etc. cetera. Um, I can guarantee, though, Rob, if they're looking at the, the metrics for this, um, views wise, they'll be happy. They don't really care what's in the comments unless the comments are about their product. And what was really nice and very, very interesting about this video is that there was very, very few people saying, uh, you know, stop shilling robo form or, you know, why, why is there an ad halfway through it, all that stuff, which you tend to get whenever you do a sponsored video. Um, there were very few of those comments because people were so fixated on the result of this iMac test. That alone for me is really interesting. Um, so that, yeah, the, the fact that there's no negative stuff about RoboForm in the comments. And um, I can see we've sent quite a few uh, kind of uh, new customers their way. I think they'll be happy, Rob, really. I mean, I, I would be if I was a RoboForm and I was on that video. Happy days. That's a good investment in your marketing budget. <laughs> um, James, lots of Jameses. Um, do brands you work with offer unhelpful criticism on videos you make with slash for them? Uh, if so, do you respond to that in a different way? Um, I've been relatively lucky with this. So most videos, I've had a few comments about this recently on, on a few sponsored videos where people have said, um, you know, how much input do brands have in these videos? And I'm very honest about this, and it's very important people are aware of this. Um, they never have any creative input in it at all. The only input, I mean, some brands will want to do that, but if that, I don't work with brands like that. It's very rare you come across them. I've had one or two inquiries where, it's been quite clear from those early conversations that they want to have a real input on the creative direction, which basically means we want to influence your your opinion of our product. Not interested in that at all. All I want from a brand, if, if, if a brand is sponsoring a video for either from a, um, an integration perspective, like a, you know, a two minute integration um, or a fully dedicated video for their product, all I want from them is a PDF that tells me the facts about the product. So the specs, the um, the market positioning, the pricing across different uh, countries, and anything else I need to know that, that that is very specific about that product that needs to be mentioned. What they don't do is say, this is what you need to say about it. This is what you need to think about it. This is the, the benefit that we think you should somehow work into your life about it. That is what a lot of people, not a lot, but a few of the trolls that comment on, on this stuff seem to think happens. They seem to think we're just told by the brand, this is exactly what you should feel about our product. That never happens. I've never worked with a brand like that at all. And this brings me back to this question, James, uh, because... I've not, because of that, because I only work with brands that one, I know, like, and trust, I actually like their, their product. Why, why on earth would I be sponsored? Would I, would I be sponsored by a product that I don't like or use or think is rubbish? It doesn't make any sense at all. Um, so because of that, and because I work with brands who are trustworthy and they go about their thing, their, their marketing ethically, and they understand this kind of marketing, which is what it is. Um, it doesn't tend to happen. You occasionally get fairly annoying things where they'll say, oh, can you just uh, add this bit in? Can you add this? Um... Well, I'll tell you what it is normally. It's, 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 it's kind of terms and conditions type stuff where I might mention a, a really good example of this is battery life for headphones So if, if or earbuds. So if, if I quote a um, battery performance for a pair of earbuds, and I get the time right, but there's, there's the way they, they reach the, the 24 hour mark is because they combine the, the case charging with the, the battery in the, in the earbuds. If I, if, if that, if they, if I don't explain that explicitly, some brands say, can we, can you do that? Can you explain exactly how we got to that number? My response to that is no, you don't need to do that because I, I become a walking, talking manual at that point, you know, an instruction manual. That is what the instruction manual is for. As long as I quote it as is accurate, basically. So if, if they've got 24 battery, li 24 hours battery life, I hope this is making sense. If they have 24 hours battery life, it doesn't really matter how that's made up. I can give a very rough overview of it, but I don't need to go into the minute technical detail. The reason for that is because no one cares. No one will dig into it in that de much detail on a video and I'll lose the audience. And um, people who really want to know about that stuff will do their own research. They'll watch my video and think, okay, I wonder how that, how those 24 hours work. And they'll go onto the, the brand's website, dig into the tech specs and they'll find that information. Long way of saying, James, um, 
very rare. I don't think I've ever had any criticism about a video from a brand. Um, most of them are very respectful. They, they understand that it's your thing. It's your creative direction. It's your opinion of their product. Um, yeah, it's, it's been it's been fine. I'm sure I'll come across a brand in the future that, that isn't like that, but we'll see. <clears throat> Uh, Michael, what team do you support? Need a drink before that one. Uh, not Man United. Uh, a few people on Twitter assumed that I did support Man United because I was taking photos at Old Trafford from the home end. I don't support Man United at all. Um, I support Northampton Town. That's where I'm from. I've never supported a, a Premier League team. Um, yeah. Yeah, not much more I can say about that, really. Northampton Town are dreadful. Um, very frustrating team to support. Uh, I used to be a season ticket holder, but not anymore. Uh, uh, let's have a look. James. Oh, lots. I, I, I don't know if I keep picking the same James or a different one, sorry. Um, do, you, do you look to tell a story in your videos? Yes, every single video is a story. Um, in fact, any YouTube video that you've watched and enjoyed has a story in it and it's, it's the way that you it's the way that we do this it, if you don't tell a story one you won't generate any interest in the video you won't hold people's attention because as humans we like stories you know we, we like a beginning a middle and an end we like that hero's journey thing where you know there's, there's a need at the start that's required and then you can, the, the, the hero um finds a, a solution for that need and then reaches a point where something goes wrong but then it's the hollywood thing basically uh, everything ends satisfactorily at the end and because it all end, happens nicely at the end people carry on watching and for that for that resolution um so yeah there has to be a story no matter what the video is about whether it be reviewing a phone or or literally telling a story about a trip somewhere or something um they are stories yeah so that the, the, and there's, there's a very specific structure to that as well james which um again we go through in the in the academy but i will be making some templates um available for this as well uh, for notion at some stage some free stuff so you can you can dig into that but just google ali abdol and um i think he calls it the hives Yes, um, he explains it very well. Um, but yeah, stories is what this is all about. Uh, Michael would love the Snapdragon. Would love the Snapdragon. Love love to head to. Would love Snapdragon. You want to go to Old Trafford, basically, Michael, don't you? Um, on on behalf of Snapdragon, um, even on our bad form at the minute. Yes, guilty. I'm a Man United fan. I won't hold it against you, Michael. Um, they weren't great though. And they did celebrate like they'd won the Champions League when they beat Luton 1-0 at home. Um, but it was a lovely day out. And I'm very grateful to Snapdragon for sending me and my, my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law is a United fan. So he had a, he had a wonderful day, kind of. Um, what are the questions have I got? So we've got about six or seven minutes, guys, before I've got a shoot-off, unfortunately. Um, let me have a quick look. Have I missed anything here? Uh, da -da -da. Keep them coming, guys, if you've got any other questions. What's this about Black Friday? Alan, any, any Black Friday purchases, uh, new AI ones such as the Opus Clips, Brain FM, TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy Legend? <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh, the only thing I've bought for Black Friday is some kit from uh, Gymshark. That's just the only, that's the only thing I've bought myself. Um, there'll, be, there'll be lots of stuff over the next week, I think, Alan, uh, and I'm sure there'll be lots of interesting stuff for creators as well. Uh, Michael, you did need to hide behind the sofa for, for most of that, definitely. Any other questions, guys? Any other questions about this whole kind of responding to criticism thing on, on YouTube? Fascinates me, this this topic. It really does. Um, this is a great one. Ooh, not that one, sorry, Callum. Uh, James, again, um, are you worried AI is going to replace you? If AI replaces me and I can still take money from the business... Happy days! I'll be in. I'll be in the Bahamas, guys. I'll, I'll be um, lording it up. Uh, um, am I taking this seriously? Um, I'm not worried. I am. I'm very conscious of it. I'm very conscious of the fact that um, AI is increasingly something that people are relying on. I, I rely on it to, to a degree in this in this in this um, business because it's very important. It, it, it speeds the process up of certain things. Um, but I'm, I'm aware that people also like to engage with it. So we, we can't really stop the fact, we can't prevent the fact, 
or the march, if you like, towards people watching and engaging with AI, AI content and enjoying it, that's not going to stop. That's only going to increase. Um, and, you know, you hear, hear about things like v, VTubers, which is, you know, make-believe YouTubers who are completely AI generated, um, having fan bases and stuff. And that doesn't scare me. It, it, I just find it, I find it fascinating. But equally, I like to think that, that there's always going to be a place for this sounds like a bit of a cliche, really. And a lot of people say this. And it sounds like whenever you say this, it sounds like you're just trying to make yourself make yourself feel better about the, the whole situation. But I, I would like to think that there's always a place for this, for, for a real human being. Um, I know I'm not under I'm not stupid enough to think that AI can't one day completely replace this. And it can probably almost do that now. Um but I do think there's something about this connection that you build with an audience. I also think that I started my channel roughly at the right time, I think. And this, this isn't to say that you shouldn't start a YouTube channel now. I think you should. I think there's, there's, there's always a good time to start a YouTube channel. Um, but I think I did it at quite a good time for tech, really. I think it was a good time to get people on board during the COVID, COVID period. Um, so I've built, I've built an audience. And, and that audience isn't, I don't take it for granted. It could disappear tomorrow. But as long as I keep doing what I'm doing, I'd like to think that kind of, I can work alongside AI, really. And whether or not there, ha there happens to be an AI version of me in the future, which is like for a certain portion of my audience, then fine, that, I've got no problem with that. I'll always move with the times. But I think it's going to be a fascinating four, five, six, ten years ahead in terms of content creation and what AI does to it. Because what it's doing at the moment, like I say, is is vastly shrinking the amount of work that you have to do on certain certain processes within a production process uh, whether it be you know scripting or um research you know title generation idea generation uh, editing all that sort of stuff it's making some really positive impacts on the on the creation process and that's a really good thing that, that that's the sort of stuff we should really be happy about and and take advantage of as well callum uh what is your biggest red flag you see with brands looking to work with you biggest red flag there's a lot of red flags um that you that you learn over time um the biggest red flag i need to think about this i think the biggest red flag is a very woolly contract or the lack of a contract completely if there's if they don't really seem that bothered about signing a contract um or that if, if their contract offer has lots of talk about you know um, using your content elsewhere and some you know, iffy bits and pieces in there. That, to me, is a big red flag. The, the contractual side of things is where you can go very wrong with YouTube. Um, and we've got, behind the scenes, we've got a like a WhatsApp group, myself and a few other YouTubers. Uh, there's, there's about seven or eight of us in there now, I think. Um, and we were talking about this the other day, where we've at some point we've all had a problem with a contract with a brand, where the brand has basically tried to take us for a ride. Um and it's every, everyone in that chat has had the same thing. And we're all roughly the same size. Some people have got slightly bigger channels. Some people have got slightly smaller channels. But we're, you know, we're roughly the same kind of, um, in, in the same era of, of, of content creation and the same kind of bunch of people. Um, and we've all had the same problem. So I think that's the biggest red flag. And it, I suppose the other one is what I mentioned a moment ago, which is if they, if they seem to be attempting to influence your opinion of their product um which you can you can generally pick up on it's it's not it's normally fairly obvious if they're doing that so yeah i think that's probably it but the contract thing is massive it's really important uh alan does deleting or hiding comments bad for your chat is it so basically is is hiding or very quickly so you, you can delete comments on youtube um that 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 allows the person that you delete whose comment you deleted to post in the future they can come back and post again or you can hide them so you can there's a brilliant option and it's still every time you use it it's so satisfying particularly when someone has gone to town on you and they've like left it's normally just one very long paragraph of completely indecipherable text but you can you can roughly make out that they're calling you an, an idiot basically um there's a button that you can click it's two buttons one to, to bring up the menu and another one that says hide from channel you do that and they just disappear their entire comment goes and what's lovely about it is that they go into this kind of pocket somewhere in youtube that you can't see they can't see and they can try and comment again but whenever they comment it just goes straight into that pocket no one sees it so that's the most satisfying option that youtube has coming to your question alan in in terms of whether or not either of those things are bad for your channel algorithm 
Um, no real idea what, what you're asking. I know exactly what you're asking. I, I, it's a fair thing. And I, it has crossed my mind occasionally. If I've had quite a big bout of deleting comments or um, hiding trolls from the channel, I do sometimes sit there and think, would it have been best to leave it there, possibly? And I've always come to the conclusion that those people are in the minority. And for that reason, it doesn't matter. I think your mental health is far more important. I think getting rid of those people, hiding people, people from the channel who are clearly troublemakers is better for the, for the channel. It's better for your audience. It's just a good thing overall. So even if there is a tiny little dent in the algorithm, uh, the, you know, the performance of the video for that, it would be so minute. I wouldn't worry, basically. It's far more important, important that you get rid of those people. Um, I'll extend it by five minutes, guys, and I'm going to have to shoot off because um, we are getting some more questions. Um, David, Amazon's KDP algorithm checks for AI-generated material. What's their KDP algorithm, David? I've never heard of that. Um, intra is, is it? Uh, I'm, gu I'm guessing this is for uh, reviews. Is it for product reviews? That's good. That's a very good thing if that's the case because th that's not right. <laughs> Leaving AI-generated product reviews is a very bad thing. Uh, Rob, any thoughts on Viva Last Manhole covers? <laughs> There's always an F1 question, isn't there? Um, I've, I've watched I watched a little bits of the practice earlier, um, but when I was doing my blog writing this morning, a little a notification popped up on BBC Sport to say that they'd abandoned was it the first practice session because a manhole cover had been sucked out of the ground by uh, one of the cars. Um, I just read that and thought, only in Vegas. This could only happen there, couldn't it? Um, <laughs> I think they've fixed it though, haven't they? They've gone back and it's all been done now, but. Um, uh, what do I think about the Vegas thing? The, the driver intro thing, as lots of people pointed out, this that opening ceremony when when they appeared on those big plinths out of the ground was so Hunger Games. The music, the lights, the the, the thing that the fact they were on these plinths on on their own, standing there, you know, looking a bit cheesed off, um, scared actually, uh, was very like hilariously Hunger Games. Um, it's just Vegas. It's gonna. It's always gonna be like that, isn't it? I love Vegas, by the way. I'm going there in January for CES. Funny enough, um, the race tomorrow morning. I am gonna. I'm gonna get up early and watch it because it's five a.m. No, six a.m. This uh, in the UK. Um, but I know they were, they were racing until they were they were practicing and qualifying until about four in the morning, weren't they? Just utterly crazy. Like, it could only be Vegas, couldn't it? Um, it's quite endearing for that reason. But the manhole cover. Why didn't they check that beforehand? Um, brilliant. Ah, okay, David. Uh, the Kindle Direct platform for ebook writers. Oh, okay, it wasn't what I thought. So they they're checking for AI generated books. I'm guessing books that have been written with uh, with AI. Interesting. Uh, should they do that? It, it's a. This is where AI is really fascinating because. There are, you know, Google has kind of accepted, not in, in so many words, but it's quite clear in, in certain recent um, algorithm updates that they they appreciate that AI content, <clears throat> excuse me, AI content is out there and people are engaging with it and they're getting what they want from it. So th is that a bad thing? You know, Medium, for instance, has a very hard, as you would guess, has a, has a very hard stance on AI generated content. But equally, if I'm looking for an article on something and I read a piece of, text that is ai generated but i get value from it is that is that a problem is that is that a bad thing if i read a book that has been generated by ai and it entertains me is that a bad thing if it's a factual factual book you know a, 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 a biography of someone or a, a text on on, uh, on a specific subject and it gets things wrong which ai does quite regularly that's different but um i don't know it's, it's a really interesting topic i think right guys we've got two minutes uh, any other questions any other questions? Have I missed anything? Don't think I have. Two minutes. Oh, left David's question on there. Um, I'm just scrolling through the questions. I don't think we have any more, have we? Guys, I'm going to call it a call it a day there, I think, because like I say, I've got to rush back and get this. Oh, what's this? Hang on. There's more on the Amazon thing. Uh, Amazon requires a tick for AI-generated content, but it does not but it does need to know about AI assistance. There is a difference. Oh, there's a massive difference, yeah. Um, AI assistant, yeah. I, I don't know. It's, it's a big topic. May, maybe the next live stream will be on AI, perhaps. In fact, I might do that. I'll make a note of that. We'll, we'll perhaps talk about AI next week because um, it is a very fascinating topic. 
Guys, I'm going to leave you there. I'm going to rush back and get involved in this live stream thing for MediaTek. I think I can mention that. There are embargo things, but I've not mentioned those. So I'm, I'm sure we're fine. Um, but yeah, have a fantastic weekend. If you're watching the F1 tomorrow, if it's very early, then I'm, I'm up with you. Don't worry, not the only person doing it. Um, and yeah, have a fantastic weekend. And remember, I know Callum wants me to keep mentioning this. Um, you can now pay for the Academy membership in installments. So you don't have to pay them. It, I don't think it's expensive. I think you're getting a lot of value for your money. But equally, I completely understand that people, particularly coming, coming up to Christmas, um, will want to spread the cost of things occasionally and you can do that so that's all been done it's all on the website there's a link below um, and also if you haven't signed up to the substack newsletter yet please do because it's uh, people seem to like it and yeah you can unsubscribe at any time if you want to um alan is saying please discuss ai i'm going to put it on the list for next week we'll come back and talk about ai next week and do a proper q a on that then but um yeah have a great weekend guys i'm going to end the stream now and i'll catch you next week cheers <laughs>